What's going on, everybody? You know what time it is. It is time for another episode of the Make Money and Have Fun show. I'm super pumped up today. I mean, I just I have the coolest guests, the coolest people coming on this show. And we're talking about business, entrepreneurship, life, and really just whatever the heck else comes on. And today I'm super excited to introduce you to my guest. So let's get in. My motto in life is make money and have fun. I'm on a mission to show everyone how to make money yeah, and have fun. I'm all about making money and having fun. All right. So here's the deal. So I was actually just talking to Mark Evans backstage and I told him, I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I, I know all of your friends. I'm like, I hang out with Frank McGovern. I had Tim Bratz on this show and I had all these really cool people. And I reached out to Mark, I guess about a week or so ago, maybe it was about two weeks ago. And I said, Hey man, I'd love to have you on my show. And he was just like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. And it's always interesting to me because the number one question that I get asked on this show pretty much is, dude, how did you get whoever to be your guest? How'd you get Les Brown to come on this show? How did you get Craig Reed to come on this show? How'd you get Mark Evans? How'd you get Tim Bratz? All these people. And the funniest part for me is I'm like, I just asked them. <laughs> and so it's it's so cool to see these people, the, the level of success that they have in their life, but also the, the humility that they have just as a human being and as a person. So let me give you a little background on Mark Evans, the DM, tell you who he is, what he does. So no one thought that Mark Evans would graduate from high school. Even his teachers thought he probably shouldn't, he probably should just try to pass and then get a minimum wage job. Well, Mark had a different plan in mind. Uh, he started his business, which is a real estate company at just 19 years old, and then he acquired another company shortly after that. He learned on the fly after nearly sending one of his companies into bankruptcy. Um, and then after starting or acquiring multiple businesses, Mark realized that he wanted to enjoy a life and lifestyle that few entrepreneurs had time to enjoy. So Mark taught himself the power of building a virtual business, which is very timely for where we are in our economy right now, which basically just means that he could start his business from anywhere. And that's why his friends also started calling him the DN instead of the, the DM for the digital nomad. So whether he's sipping an ice cold beer on a Caribbean beach or walking the famous Camino de Santiago, which I don't even know if I said that right, because I've clearly never been there, or riding on the back of an elephant in, in, the, in India, he's also running two eight-figure business. It's no wonder that author and internet marketing guru Mark, Mike Littman said this about him. The DM, Mark Evans, is the godfather of virtual real estate. I've never met anyone who travels the world while closing deals and sipping cocktails. So let's bring the man himself on stage, Mr. Mark Evans. What's going on, Mark? What's up, Fred? How you doing, my man? How are you? Dude, Good this buddy. is so cool. Yeah, no, it's exciting, man. This is it's it's interesting because this is like the first time that I actually have you here instead of on on your Instagram, <laughs> dude. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I want to hear your your story from from your own mouth. Just kind of tell us who you are, what you do, and whatever yeah. else. No, man, I appreciate it. You know, I grew up small town Ohio, small about an hour east of Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, six hundred fifty people, no cops, no like we had no stoplights, no cops or any of this stuff. It was crazy. Um, and I actually started business. I've never had a real job. I've never had a W2 job as an adult my entire life. So, you know, like you said, you know, barely graduated high school. College was never an idea or thought for me. I just wanted to go out and make things happen truthfully. And, uh, and that's what we did, man. We, uh, you know, two days after high school, I bought a seamless gutter company, owner financing. I still to this day, I have no clue why that guy sold it to me, but he, well, I do know why I asked. That's like 90, that's the number one reason most people aren't succeeding is they're just not willing to ask. <laughs> But uh, like you did, Fred, and that's why we're here, right? So, <clears throat> you know, you, all you got to do is ask, and you'd be amazed at what happens when you ask. But, uh, you know, just started figuring out how do I make money in real estate? And, you know, real estate's the equalizer of dummies. Um, literally, if you just have guts and uh, a plan and act, keep executing until you get what you want, keep your feet moving, <clears throat> you will ultimately succeed at a certain level. And then, you know, I started evolving this October 8th. My grandmother passed away. It was a very big deal in my life. I was 27 years old. Um, I nearly went bankrupt twice in that in, from 18 to 27, by the way. Um, but I didn't, I kept my feet moving. Me and my girlfriend, now my wife, Dina, we left December 31st, 2005. This is, I mean, we had real phones. You plugged into the wall, fax machines. You didn't have DocuSign and all this other amazing stuff they have today. Right. Um, and I, I left my company 
I was scared. I was overwhelmed. I was dry heaving. I was puking. Um, I was scared. I was going to lose everything. Um, but I had to do it. Uh, you know, I was making a decent amount of money, um, but I didn't have time freedom. And uh, that's what really I'm chasing now. I'm trying to figure out how to make more money so I have more time to do the things I want to do, like stuff like this. I love sharing messages one to many. How can we work 30 minutes and yeah. impact people's lives forever? <clears throat> um, you know, it's awesome. I see a lot of people out there hustling hard, but they're doing one-on-one. -on -one. And it's very mm -hmm. tough to do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but that you should be conscious of that activity or effort that you're doing. So from 05, me and my wife traveled around the country and the world for seven years. We did walk the Camino de Santiago. It's actually a 42-day trip across uh, Spain. Um, it's, it's awesome, 500 miles. It's an amazing experience. I'm, I'm looking forward to do it again when the kids get older. But you know, now fast forward, I'm involved in over 40 companies. Um, I own some of them. Some of them I'm just... Uh, uh, partners in. Um, I love creating massive amounts of cash flow. I want to be stupid, filthy rich, even richer today, you know, today than I was yesterday. Um, if you have a problem with that, that's your problem, not my problem. And when I say stupid, filthy rich, I'm talking so much money that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Money is simply a tool and create options. You got to create great product, create services and be a great human being, in my opinion. Uh, so that's in context, do all those things and then create a lot of money uh, by helping a lot of cool people out and I've, you know, we're just getting started. So I haven't really done much from where I'm going to be 10 years from now. Yeah. Um, I really feel, feel like I'm playing small every day. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, we have a lot of amazing teams. The difference now too, a lot of my companies, I'm not the CEO. I'm not the daily driver. I'm more of a board member. I sit right. on, you know, so I, I see a lot of people out there saying, Oh dude, I own this company. Cool. Leave for a month and see what happens. The company owns you. You don't yeah. own the company. Um, I have a lot of amazing people on my team. I'm team. I'm, I'm team built, not self-made. I got. I'm team made. Uh, my team's amazing. I put them up against anybody's team because um, I mean we got some amazing stuff going on. But yeah, man, that's it. I you know I love uh, real estate for what it did for me. It's not mm -hmm. my thing anymore. I don't care about real estate. I never. I haven't cared in ten years. Um, I use it sure. just as a cash flow tool. Take that cash and go buy real businesses. See, the reason I like businesses as opposed to real estate as you evolve into the uh, food chain of uh, economies um, is real estate. I can go buy a 100 unit complex. Cool. It's $10 million, whatever. Buy it for $10 million. It's only worth so much, right? Cash flow. You can, maybe I'll sell it for $12 million 10 years from now or whatever based off of cash flow, ROI, et cetera. Cool. It makes a little bit of money. You pay down your debt. You got some good leverage positions maybe. But the other thing on this is in business, I could pay the same $10 million and I could take that company and sell it for hundreds or maybe even billions of dollars, hundreds of millions, if not billions, depending. Yeah. So it's the same time and energy. By the way, buying companies, you're talking to a motivated seller, house or business, yeah. <laughs> both motivated. Sure. So just changing the conversations, right, Fred? So I think at the end of the day, man, that's where I'm really evolving. I, I've, I've, uh, in the last, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm making a very aggressive in business building um, and buying. I like to buy existing businesses and all that, but we, we're, we're crushing it, man. And, uh, you know, there's some are doing amazing. Some get smacked around during economies. Uh, but the good news is we are diversified um, and we have great teams. We're growing. We're hiring people left and right. And uh, it's neat to be a part of it, man. I'm just, like I said, we're just getting started. I can only imagine where we'll be 10 years from now. I love I love hearing you say that that you're just getting started. It, it just it goes to show how much of a growth and abundance mindset you have coming into this. I'm I'm a firm believer, and and a lot of this I get from just listening to to the DM podcast and and all that kind of stuff from listening to you. I'm a pretty firm believer that if people just didn't give up on themselves, there would be a lot more successes in this world. What, what, what do you think? No man, I see it unfortunately every day. People give up on themselves all the time. You know the difference is. The reason they give up on themselves because they have a plan B, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I'll just sit at home and just accept what I got. Mm -hmm. And I'd never accept. I don't accept. I don't abide by the rules. I get down and I get dirty and I play to win. And a lot of times people, the reason people give up on themselves, they just don't even know what game they're playing. You know, sure. I'm playing the game of life. They're playing the game of I'm going to be a real estate investor. Dude, that's peanuts compared to what you really want to do. Um, exactly. But to build that life, you got to learn. You know, you got to go through adversity. You got, you know, I know your show's called Make Money and Have Fun. There's a lot of days that suck ass. <laughs> sure. So, you know, it's, but with that said, it's fun because that's when people quit. When shit hits the fan, get excited because that's where your 
competitors, if you will, quit. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're not the quitter and you keep moving forward. It's like football. When I played football in high school, it's like, just keep your feet moving. Even if you're getting pushed back, keep your feet moving. You shut, you, you stop moving your feet, you're on the ground, you know, and that's yeah. like that's business, you know, just in, in, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. And it's funny that you brought up make money and have fun because for me, I, I created this all around alignment. A lot of people think it's financial literacy or they, they think it's, you know, teaching people how to build their passion, but it's really about creating alignment between both. And it's, I, I was actually interviewed on this yesterday and I was talking about, it's not, it's not picking the easy thing. It's not trading in your work for play. It's just picking the work that you want and, you know, picking the, the work that, that you like. And, it, and it's funny that you brought this up too. I, I want to roll back to real estate. So you started off as a real estate investor. I started off as a real estate investor, which is kind of how I got in your in your space and in your your ecosphere, so to speak. But it's funny because a lot of people, and I, and I think it, it might even be more so people who are at a high level in real estate, always say that they they hate real estate but they love the business model. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, well, have a business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think they think they do, <laughs> but if your business, first of all, real estate. It's just an asset class. It has nothing to do. You can build a business off of it, but very few people are building businesses with real estate. If you have to make decisions, you have to sign loans, you have to say yes or no. I mean, these are all things that you're going to have to do as you know, you can never leave the business um, ever. Um, and my other businesses, I, and by the way, I still do real estate. I still got to sign stuff. I still got to approve stuff. Thumbs up, right? Sure. Whatever. Um, and I'm not saying I stopped that, but at the end of the day, it's not a business. It's just an investment. And it's not passive investing if you're actively working in it. <laughs> so exactly. for real estate investors get in trouble, Fred, is they, they, you know, and I've been down this path. This is actually how I almost went bankrupt is, oh, I'll, just start, I'll start wholesaling. Oh, I'm going to do rentals now. Oh, I'm going to do rehabs and retail. That's three, four, five businesses wrapped up in one umbrella. Because if you do rentals, that's a different animal than if you do wholesale. Wholesale is a different animal if you do retail. And everyone thinks just because like, well, I don't want to wholesale that deal and make 20 grand a day. I want to, I want to rehab it and fix it up and make a hundred grand because I'm giving all my profits away. It's like, well, you just bought yourself a job and you might sell it. You might not. Now you got to source money. You got to source contractors. More importantly, you got to stay within a budget. <laughs> and that's not fun always with contractors and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now exactly. all of a sudden, you, you, you got a high paying job working for a psycho, i.e. yourself. Um, so I think at the end of the day, man, I think a lot of people think they're in business and they're not. And, and dude, this is, this took me a long time to discover this. Like it took me about 20 years to really figure out I don't own a business. The business owns me, even though I was virtual. Um, I still had to make massive decisions. I had to hire people, fire people, you know, stamp of approval and deals. And uh, it's, it's tacking to say the least real business, you know, and scalability, by the way, too, real estate's very tough, tough to scale single family model for sure. Um, scalability issues, people issues, bear of entry is zero. It's actually negative. I mean, you guys all see the dipshit wholesalers out there that have no clue. They don't even know what a HUD is. They don't even know what these words mean, right? Yep. So what happens is the bear of entry into real estate investing, thank God there, it's zero because I wouldn't be here where I'm at today if it wasn't because I had no money. I had no credit. I was 18 years old. I just had guts. And at the end of the day, man, you get it, to get this thing making 50 to 100 grand a month consistently, and take that money and go build a real business. Go buy into a real business. Don't build it, by the way. Buy an existing one. I could buy cash flow. I could take a million dollars cash and go buy, you know, massive six figures of cash flow today, literally in a company. That's what we do all the time. So, and I can grow it and I can streamline it and I can hire better people. And I, you know, there's all cool verticals and integration and stuff, but that's kind of where you use real estate for what it is, no more, no less. And then go build a, and go buy and grow a real business. Is what I recommend. Interesting. So, how did you how did you find real estate in the first place? Like, yeah, how, how did that come to be? Yeah, well, I was you know I grew up in a small town. Like everyone did construction, was a farmer, or worked at the mill. My dad was a co contractor, that you know, so I always understood contracting. I know about houses. I could build them from ground up. It was easy. I did it my whole life. And what happened is I was doing seamless gutters. That's the first company I bought. And this guy kept pulling up in a Porsche smoking cigars. And I'm like, dude, what, like, how are you paying me all the time doing all these houses? He's like, I'm a real estate investor. And then I was watching infomercials. It's Carlton Sheet days, Russ Whitney days. 
And I went to a Russ Whitney event. I was 18 years old, and I literally used every penny I had. Um, I was I was actually floating. I was robbing from Paul to pay Peter, if you will. Um, I had money coming in from a couple of jobs. It was like 2,500 bucks back then, which was a lot of like that was my life savings back then. Sure. And literally, it wasn't even my money. <laughs> it was jobs yeah. that I had projected to go do. I just mm-hmm. took that money and invested in myself. And I had three days. I had to learn. I had to learn how to make money. Um, and that's kind of how it all started evolving. And then just, you know, going to seminars, events, masterminds, reading massive amounts of books. I've read over 5,000 books now on, uh, my, by the way, this is all mindset. It has nothing to do about real estate, right, by the way, but mindset and then real estate, you know, Think and Grow Rich was the first book I ever read. And then I started learning about real estate and then, you know, you just keep evolving and, and just getting excited about, by the way, I hate reading still. I suck at reading. <laughs> I read very slow. I forget what I read because my mind's a hundred miles per hour. Right. But I get addicted to it because I know that's where people quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was, I mean, it's, it's funny for me because the, the more, the more successful people I interview, the more I realize they had these pretty giant downturns at some point. It seems, yeah. it seems to almost be like a metric of success at this point where it's like, oh, I went bankrupt or I almost went bankrupt or I got divorced or I was in prison or I was this or I was that, you know, whatever, whatever their, their down point story is. And I always look at that and, you know, I, I built up a, a very small real estate empire, you know, nothing compared to what you have uh, when I was 22 and I watched it all burn down around me because the same thing, you know, as, as most people do, I did a lot of stuff right and a few things wrong. And I was like, okay, we got to fix this. But, you know, it was the same thing. I was on the brink of bankruptcy, you know, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul to kind of just keep myself floating you know it was, it was literally like as soon as the the rent checks came in i paid off my credit cards and i used my my credit cards to pay my bills <laughs> <laughs> so i never got dinged with it with a 30 day late at least um and and it's like do you do you believe that that people need to go there to that that low point to truly achieve success not at all man that's just where we're at you know I, the truth is to be honest i don't really think about that stuff um because it doesn't serve me um, there, I wouldn't change anything in my life ever. Um, so it's like the good and the bad, by the way, most people take all the credit for all the good stuff. They never take credit for all the bad shit they do in their life. Yeah. I actually, I, I actually acknowledge it and I appreciate it because I learned from it. Um, the truth is there's a lot of people that are very successful. That's never had a bad time, you know, financially mm-hmm. or in the dumps or in the gutters. Maybe they're fit. You know, my son, my kids, my daughter, they probably will never have a financial issue um, to get into business, the bear of entry, like I did, but that doesn't mean they won't fail. That means they won't, that, that, that doesn't even guarantee success either. Right. I do believe there's a, a group of people out there that are successful, um, or could be successful that think they have to go down in a rabbit hole and go negative to get positive. Um, I don't think that's the case, by the way, I'm willing to put it on the line every day today. Um, so I, I think it's just more of a behavior. It's actions. It's, it's, a uh, uh, goals. It's, you know, what's our effort? What, what do we really want to accomplish in life? And, I get more excited every day. I'll be 43 this year in June. I, I just believe that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take, dude, I get ripped off all the time. I lose money, but I, I don't care about money like that. I care about my goals and my vision. Like you're going to get smacked. I'm in the game to win. Most yep. people are playing a game not to lose. I'm playing a game to win. These are two totally different habits, two totally different cadences in life. So I'm, I'm in the game to win and I know there's going to be losses to win. And uh, what's cool about what we get to do, Fred is, in business, the longer I'm in it, the more I can win and the bigger wins I can have. Yes. It's not like an athlete where you come out of the gate hot at 18 to 24 and that's your prime and you're done. And then you got to go figure out something else. Like, dude, my prime hasn't even hit yet. <laughs> you know, seriously, like I have, I'm still learning every day. I was on conference calls today with two different guys that are very high level. They run way different than me. They're very analytical, you know, structured. I'm like, dude, let's just sell this shit. Let's go, let's go. Um, and it takes balance. It takes understanding. It takes team. Um, but dude, I, I don't think you have to be negative, man. I think at the end of the day, um, we are, we are where we are. It is what it is, you know? And, um, I would hate for someone that comes from, you know, maybe a good background wealth wise to sure. not take action on their life goals. Um, because they, they feel like they have to have no money or be a part of the club of, of, uh, schleps like us or me, I should say, you sure. know, coming out of small town, Ohio. Um, <laughs> but you know, as long as they have their heart in the right place and, you know, they're willing to put in the effort, man, I think it is what it is. Just do the work. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree. It's, it's, it's interesting. Cause 
for for you, I'm sure you've seen this. For for me, I've I've, I've listened to so many you know audios and podcasts and and seminars and webinars and and you know traveled with so many different people and coaches and and mentors and, and you start to hear similarities. You're like, oh, this is this is the same here. This is the same there. And whenever whenever I listen to you, I, I feel like most of the time you're talking about you know just picking one thing and and focusing on that and basically tripling down on that on that one thing until that actually builds into something. Mm-hmm. And then just never giving up on yourself and having that that growth and abundance kind of mindset with with everything that you do. Yeah. Would, would you say that that's kind of like your your core philosophy for anybody who would like come to you asking for success or? Um, I, I guess it depends where they're at in the journey, um, you know, and kind of what their personalities are. Some people are really good at multitasking and, and opportunities. It depends how big the opportunity is. Some some are cash flow opportunities. Some are longer projection opportunities. Some are I need to make money today projections, you know, like. So it depends on how you're good. I have a buddy. He owns a pretty big business. He's only good at one thing, and he can't he can't multi he can't build other companies. Um, keep in mind, he's doing like forty five fifty million a year now, which is fine, right. great living. But he could be doing um, you know hundreds of millions with his skills. Gotcha. Company, you know, I I believe if you could learn a, one constantly invest in yourself, be going to seminars listen to podcast shows, listen to books. You can buy a book for $25 to change your life. I mean, it's it's insane that people are like, dude, I have no money. First of all, you don't have to buy it. Go borrow it on, from the library or whatever. You have to get started like on yourself today. You're, you're worth it. You deserve it and if you're willing to put work in. So, yeah, man, I think at the end of the day, uh, it depends on who they are. I guess that's our job. Um, as you know, I've mentored a lot of great people. Um, and still am. I mean, I got some amazing guys that are just crushing life and business in general. And uh, we're still all learning. We know we don't know anything. We're, we're all just learning together. Um, it just happens to be that we're making more money now. And uh, we're zigging and zagging, getting punched in the teeth. Um, it is what it is, man. I don't know. Is it really, when, when you get to that level, I, I often hear people say it's it's the same thing. It just has more zeros on the end of it. Is, is that really true or, or is there there more to it kind of? Well, what level are you talking about? Like just levels? Like, 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 for, like let's, let's just give a hypothetical scenario. Like if you were, if you were to buy a hundred thousand dollar, you know, single family row home versus buying a hundred million dollar business, is it, is it kind of the same game or, or, you know, just with more zeros on it or, or is it, is there actually something else to it? Kind of? I mean, listen, I think it's a journey. Again, everyone has different confidence levels. I think you have to start at the hundred thousand dollar house maybe to build up the courage and the confidence and, you know, the wherewithal and you just mental, it, dude, this is mental capacity. What we're talking about is lottery winning mentality, right? You don't go from a hundred thousand to a hundred million overnight. If you did, you'd probably lose it all. Truthfully. Um, we know when you win the lottery, a very large portion, I think it's what 80 something percent of people go bankrupt. Um, it's not because of the money. It's because of the mental uh, fortitude that you have to deal with. Having money is easy. Um, taking care of it is not making money is easy. Taking care of it. That's where it starts getting complex. Yeah. That's, you know, because you have bad money habits or, you know, you, like, by the way, I, I, I believe I, I have a thing I call thought auditing. I do it myself all the time. Like, what is wealth? Wealth to me and you could be drastically different. You know, what is, what is, uh, you know, what, what, how do I see this looking? How much, ca- what's good cash flow? Some might say 10 grand is a lot. Some might say 20 million a month is a lot or not a lot. Um, it's all relative. I think it depends on what does it mean to you? But dude, I, I think, uh, first of all, um, I promise Tom Brady's working out right now trying to win another Super Bowl. Um, you know, we're chasing that win. We want to grow. We want to, you know, see what we're made of. Um, I get more excited today than I did when I was 18, 19, doing those 100K deals <clears throat> because, you know, I don't have a plan B, <laughs> never have, never will. So I'm all in on every deal. And uh, it's scary. You know, I, I like that feeling. Um, I, again, but I'm investing in myself. I'm betting on myself. Um, sure. I'm working, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. Working. That's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things that, that I, I learned early on was, was the more that you, you invest in yourself, the more others will invest back into you in a sense. And, you know, it, it just, it, it pays dividends when, when you start doing that kind of stuff. It, it depends on what you love to do, but like you're, I've, I'm a, I have a fiduciary duty to the guys that pay me a lot of money to be in my mastermind. Right. You know, sure. 35 grand a year. Like I want to be the best. I want to show up at my a game. I want to have real conversations. You know, I will tell them, Hey, you know, you gotta be real with people. And 
if you don't understand what you're talking about, how can you be real with them? You, you're just blowing smoke up their ass. And I don't do that. Like I, I want people to win. And uh, oftentimes that takes tough love, you know, like, yo, quit doing this. Here's why. Boom. And, um, you know, I think that's why I kind of got the following I got is because they know I'm going to shoot straight. Um, I mean, Fred, if you've listened to my podcast show, it's uh, very intense. Yep. Um, that's my life, though. I'm very like I love what I do, man. I, I love because I know we can change people's lives, you know, for mm-hmm. real um, through our charity yeah. you know, efforts and through helping people, build, you know, build your company better. You hire more people. They can take care of their family better. Like that's what excites me. But it's just a game, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> exciting every day. Yeah, it really, at the end of the day, for me, it, it all comes down to mindset. I mean, I've, I've written three books, two of them so far have just been about mindset. I literally uh-huh. like, I, I didn't even, I didn't even open up to like the, the make money and have fun yet. I mean, that book's coming out in a few months, but the, the first two that I wrote were all about thoughts and, and your mindset. And just when we change the way that we think, I think everything else stacks on top of that. A hundred percent, man. I mean, listen, most people, I'll be 43, like I said, um, but a lot of people are, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, carrying around their money beliefs from when they were 10 years old. Yep. You know, money, money is emotional for some reason. It, it just is what it is. And it's just a piece of paper. It's emotionless um, as exactly. can be. Now it's more virtual than anything, right? With just flying around on the interweb as we speak. But mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, man, you know, um, I think you have, as you know, mindset, just learning from other people just help you reset and reprogram. And you're not w- running your computer off of Windows 95, you know, That's why? Right. You program, it gets evolved. Like you have to change, you have to evolve, you have to make it bigger, you have to make it better. And uh, our brains are the same way, man. A lot of people say they're playing big. Like they'll say, yeah, man, I'm crushing, I'm playing big. I've been in business for 15 years. I'm like, cool, show me your P&L. Huh? Show me, what are you making a month? Oh, 12,000 a month. Dude, that, you're not playing big in any respects at all. You might be playing big because your 12 year old self is saying you're big time, but 12 grand is cute. It's not big time. Um, everyone, if you're running real businesses, should be making millions of dollars a month collectively, gross, and then be netting out six figures easily. It's not hard to do, um, knowing what I know now, you know, because I, I know the game. But uh, there's definitely opportunity, Fred, for people to evolve. And I, I'm, I'm excited to read your books. I didn't know you wrote two books on that. So I'll buy them today. But cool. it's, uh, it's powerful, man. Where do I buy them at? Amazon, right? Yeah, you can, you can head over to Amazon. Just type my name in there. It's the yep. easiest way to, uh, to check them out. Speaking of books, I want to talk about your book, man. So you wrote a really cool book. I, I dug into this and I, I immediately got hooked. I'm like, this is awesome. The, the, awesome. Just the concept of magician versus, versus mule. And then I saw that you have a new one coming out, too. So tell us about those. Let, let's start off. Tell us about magician versus mule because I love this concept and I think people need to hear it. Well, as you know, we're all we're built as mules, right? It's a beautiful thing for the world to be built as mules. But you know, as we get older, you have to figure out: do you want to be a mule all your life, um, or do you want to be a magician? Um, a magician would be like a you know um, Jeff Bezos, right? He had to be a mule for many years, but he he knew he wasn't going to be there forever. The problem with the mule especially if you're a good mule. My mom's an amazing mule. She literally, and I say in a nice way, obviously, because she, she just loved, she's just hardworking. And someone would quit and they'd give her another job. Now she's done the work of two job, two people. Then another person quits. Now she's done the work of three people. Once you get identified as a mule in a company, there's only two ways out, quit or die. That's it. There's no other way out. So, and it's very hard to quit as a mule because you don't want to let people down. That's why you're a great mule. And, the problem is eventually you just get wore out. You get beat up. You can only carry so much weight. I remember in Santorini, Greece, there's a 250 steps or 400 steps down to this water area. And they all got these mule, you know, mules going down and up and carrying products up and down. Some are good. Some aren't so good. Some have a lot of weight. Some have a little bit of weight. And uh, I think it's just identifying that you're a mule, admitting it, number one. And then, and again, I'm not saying stop working, by the way, but mule efforts, like without understanding there's a bigger picture like i can be a magician one day you're going to be a mule forever and just barely get by and it's gonna be sluggish at best um and i'd hate to see that happen and that's why i started writing that's why i wrote that book because i just wanted to share my i, I don't write books maybe like you fred I, i'm kind of a hillbilly uh still i'm well, not kind of i'm definitely hillbilly so mm-hmm. i write in the way i speak and it's kind of like if you're sitting down having a conversation with me that's how that book's written um sure. it's my number one selling book that i've ever had actually i think my next one will be more um, yeah. that's me being an optimist, by the way, I think <laughs> I wouldn't write the book if I didn't think it'd sell more. Right. <clears throat> but 
At the end of, of the day, man, the magician versus me, I'd love to see everyone become a better magician. I'm trying to be a better magician every day. That means stop being the CEO, stop being the, the daily grinder, be on the board from top down. Now I can see the playing field. Some people want to be Bill Belichick. Some people want to be Tom Brady. Some people want to be Tom, uh, uh, Robert Kraft. Do you want to be the owner? Do you want to be the, the manager? Do you want to be the player? Do you want to be the coach? Find your roles and uh, become a magician inside your role. Um, I don't want to be Tom Brady. I want to be the owner of the stadium paying Tom Brady, you know? Right. Um, so that's kind of like thought processes on top of that. But that book is, uh, it's been, a, it's been well received, which I'm super yeah, proud of. It's, it's interesting because you, you brought up the book writing world and there, there's a lot of mystique in the world where, you know, people do like put it in an obscure category, sell it for 99 cents. So it hits number one and that kind of stuff. And, you know, doing the whole like publishing versus self publishing, ghost writing, that whole kind of world. So, when I, when I looked at it at first, I was like, oh, this it's interesting that, that this was a number one seller. And then as soon as I opened the first page, I'm like, okay, now I know why. <laughs> and and it, was, it was cool because for me, ever since I, I really started like in real estate at 22 years old, I always thought about how can I remove myself from this and, and have this run on autopilot where I'm, you know, off doing, you know, whatever it is I want to be doing. And this is just feeding me. And so this kind of was almost like a strategy guide to that or, or, you know, another level up and way of thinking in those, in those realms even further in mm -hmm. a sense. So that's why it hit me. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I think, I think it, people can relate to it, right? You're, we're designed. Yeah. Like said, you know, as you go to school, sit down, shut up, raise your hand, ask a question. You know what blows my mind, Fred, for real. This is why I never would have a job ever my entire life. It, and by the way, my companies don't run like this. Um, but like, as if you, want to take a vacation you got to put it you got to raise your hand and ask your boss for permission dude if you got to take if you got to do that <laughs> like i feel sorry for you and i'm not saying that to be a jerk there's this is we have one shot at this thing called life and i'm going to have some person that probably doesn't even like me um tell me no you're you don't you can't take that week off like i'm a growing man and you're gonna tell me i can't take off work you're out of your mind maybe my sports kids sports functions you can't get off early like these are moments you can never get back and uh, that's the beautiful thing about making money as a magician is, you know, you can or a mule even you can money buys time. Money gives you the opportunity to be flexible, mobile. Um, and that's what the whole new book is about me. Economy. Um, it's my my economy. I don't care what you think about me. Um, it doesn't affect me. Um, good or bad. Right. You could say, oh, dude, you're amazing. Cool. Or, hey, you suck. Cool. Like it means nothing to me. It doesn't affect my life. I want you to like me. I'm not that they're trying to piss people off, clearly, but um, at the end of the day, I think, uh, especially in the times we live in, right, Fred, it's pretty wild in 2021. Yeah. A lot of stuff changed. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, for the good for us, I mean, we've made a lot more money. You know, the truth is I've been virtual. I've been, my life's been like this since 2005, before it was even cool. Everyone thought it was like, oh, this is a fluke. You can't be virtual, blah, blah, blah. Well, rest assured, you've been forced to become virtual. I believe schools... I believe workforces are changed forever. Like people's realized the taste of the good life. Like, hey, my boss doesn't know I'm sitting at the beach working and I'm getting shit done. Truth is, you're probably more productive and more profitable for the company being from afar. And uh, it's the micromanagers that are freaking out. <laughs> they yeah. can't, you know, the people that have to micromanage to make them feel significant inside of the environment. And I know a lot exactly. of people like that. So. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a terror. I don't micromanage anybody. Like if you say you're going to do it, do it, period. Like me, if I say I'm going to do it, it gets done no matter what I have to do. So with the me economy, Fred, it's like this world we live in, it, you know, I, you should be focusing on how do I make more money? How do I get better health? How do I, you know, how do I protect my family? Um, when shit hits the fan, you better be ready. And don't wait until it happens. Get ready now, hoping it never happens, but be ready if it does happen. Like I'd rather I'd rather have you have a hundred million in the bank than to wake up ten years from now in a massive situation where you only have a ten thousand in the bank. Be prepared for things. Think shit's gonna happen to all of us. Um, some good, some bad, whatever. But like, be ready. Like, know how to shoot a gun. Know how to build a business. Know how to read a PNL. Know how to take care of your family financially. If you have no more cash coming in, like, how do you survive? More importantly, how do you thrive? Yeah. And that's what the economy is about, Fred, is really, and by the way, this is all mindset, right? This is all mindset. Exactly. Um, it's not pretty. It's not easy. It's focused. Like, dude, everyone thinks I'm hanging out all day smoking cigars. I'm in the trenches, man. I'm building a financial fortress. And, you know, 
and like I just want my family to be protected. And it's not about money. Money is the tool. That's it. Money's like I walked out of my house. It's a true story in, in Ohio because we live part time in Ohio, part time Florida. But it really set off when I got back and I walked out of Ohio, my house, beautiful house, loved it. And I uh, walked out one day and didn't like what I saw. And it's not like, oh, poor me. I bought it. I got just got to deal with it. I went in the house and told my wife, we're going to buy a compound and we're moving ASAP. And uh, I don't just talk words. You take action on your words, which a lot of people don't, but you should. Um, and within 90 days, we were in a new compound, fully rehabbed, um, massive estate, 14 acres, and we're building, making it bigger. Again, protecting, growing. Shit hits the fan. We're on this 14 acres. We don't know what's, it's my bubble, the bubble I'm building. And uh, I hope everyone builds a bubble. By the way, everyone's in a bubble. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you just don't, you might not recognize it or even know you're in one, but my bubble consists of financial people, money people, health people, how to become a better husband, better father, better son. Like, I just want to be better all around. So I'm trying to make my bubble not just bigger, but also better, like where people can't penetrate it, you know? And sure. uh, that's why you'll see successful people have very little amount of friends. It's not because they're a jerk or whatever. It's just they're very protective of their time, you know? Like, dude, I love all you guys, but if you call me and I'm hanging out with my kids, I'm not answering the phone. I don't care about you at that moment at all, nor should I. Like, my kids are what's important to me, you know, or my wife or whatever. So I think some people's got it twisted. Like, they thought, oh, my gosh, I got to do this deal. I got to do this deal. And um, to me, it's like, you can do that if that's what you're up to. But, like, don't – time is short, man. The older I get, by the way, the more short, the shorter it gets, right? You know, exactly. so I'm very conscious of that, and I, I want to leave a massive legacy, man, you know? It's amazing. It, you know, just just saying your words and then and then backing them up with your actions. I mean, it really makes a huge difference at that point. People used to think it was so funny when uh, whenever I go to a seminar and someone recommends a book, I buy it like, like right there. Yeah, I buy it instantly. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like buying the book. Like, why? Why did you not? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. The, the other side, I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah. So it's it's you know, it, it really it just it changes your life at that point you know, just doing what, what you say you're going to do and, and actually taking the action on it. Yeah, man. Money loves speed. Speed and money are connected. I'm telling you, like, money in, money out it happens fast. I'm the same way, man. You, you told me books. I'm, I'm ready to buy them now. You know, if I wasn't honest, I'd, I, as soon as I get off this, they'll be bought. So I do the same exact thing. Um, another thing, too, man, is, like, at the end of the day for this, you know, the me economy, we got to fit, you know, we want – um, shoot, I was going to go with the, we want to make sure like we're focused on building it properly. I see a lot of great people out there, you know, as the me economy is evolving, cause it's not, it's oftentimes not convenient to be building your me economy the way you see it. Um, it's going to take growth. It's going to take stretching. It's going to take hiring, you know, Fred or, or another mastermind or mentor or whatever. It's going to, you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. And then when you get comfortable, figure out how to get uncomfortable again. Because comfortability, that's where trouble happens. And uh, you don't have to, don't pay attention to me. Watch what happens. Shit hits the fan financially. It's happening already, by the way, in the markets. But watch how wealth is being transferred around. The rich are going to get richer and the poor are going to get poorer. The middle class, they're done, man. They're going to get wiped out. Unless, hopefully they listen to this and follow your show, Fred. Like They got to figure out how to level up financially. It's no more saving and protecting. Mm -hmm. It's more... How do you invest and grow? <laughs> you know, these are two yeah. totally types of the mindset, man. Like, I, uh, I I studied martial arts for about 15 years. And one of the, one of the things that, that we always talked about is if it's to be, it's up to me. And, and it's funny that, that you bring this up. I mean, I love this concept of me economy. I saw you post the cover of it the other day yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. He's writing this other book. And I, and I heard you mention it before on your on your podcast, you know, this idea of me economy, which I, I always loved. But I love talking about personal protection and and just having your, your stuff together. I mean, me and my girlfriend watched a movie the other day and there's a scene where the the wife is like grabbing a gun for the husband and she's like doesn't know how to hold it and she's holding it by the edge. And I bump her elbow. I'm like, we're getting shooting lessons as soon as we move yeah. because that is unacceptable. Like, like in my mind, I'm always thinking like if something goes down and we need to defend ourselves or we need to, to flee or, or whatever, I want to be prepared. I want to be the person that can just get up and, and make it happen. If we need to defend ourselves, we already know how to shoot. You know, we've, we've taken classes, we've done the things that we need to do 
to create a position for ourselves where we're safe, we're protected, and we can you know thrive and survive because of that. So I absolutely love this. When is this coming out? What's the uh, what's the release I'm date? Not sure yet, man. We're, we're you know we're still in editing phases of the book. We're, they're waiting on me actually. I'm, I'm getting up early, four a.m. to edit. But, I've uh, been there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, that's the only time I can like do it because of these two kids, you know, and all that fun stuff. But sure. yeah, man, I, hopefully um, April-ish or May. Um, uh, we have a couple cool meaningful days. I like to launch books on meaningful days. Magician vs. Mule was my daughter's birthday. Oh, uh, cool. 24th. So we've done some other stuff in April that we're trying to find a cool date to tack to tie it to. Um, and what's cool too, um, Fred, is all my book sells. And this is my 13th book coming out. 100% of net profits go to charity on all my books. Um, and me, Economy, I'm super excited because we're changing charities, not because I don't like the other one, but I, we just did a big donation to the Caring House Project Foundation. But um, with Tim Ballard, you know, the underground the underground uh, thing. So yeah, I'm super excited. Him. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. So I, I feel very good about the work he's doing. Um, I want to help kids. Obviously, I love that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, to me, so when you buy books through us, or Amazon, or wherever that money, all that profits go to them, go to these great causes. I call it full circle giving, right, Fred? You're buying a book to learn and knowledge up to give. Yeah, that's amazing. The money you put in there is going to go somewhere. It's going to evolve, and you know, I'm writing. I do all this work for free. You know, I'm literally working for free, which I'm cool with. Muling, by the way, this is mule work. Um, writing a book is mule. <laughs> there's nothing magician about it, um, and there's different ways to be a little bit less mule, but. It's, it's, I'm excited, man. I'm Fred, I'm excited to get it in your hands. I'd love to hear your feedback as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait until it comes out. It's, it's funny cause I'm, I'm actually in the same space with my, my third book. So I'm writing make money and have fun, which is like my first like real book where I actually went through a publisher and it's going to be on shelves and, and all kinds of really cool stuff with it. And it's, it's the entire philosophy broken down and it's the same thing. They're waiting for me. I'm like, Oh, I gotta, I'm editing it right now. So give me another week or two. <laughs> But hopefully, like an April May launch will be be the same for me, and then we'll be in bookstores like October ish. Nice. So that'd be that'd be awesome, man. I, I can't wait until it comes out. I'm definitely yeah. gonna be picking that one up. So, dude, no. what do you when you're when you're not working? What do you like to do for fun, Mark? Well, you're assuming work's not fun, <laughs> no. dude. I you know I my days are very. I have an amazing life, so I get to wake up with my kids and hang out. I get to you know if I want to eat lunch with them, I can. If I want to hang out and have dinner, obviously we do that. Um, but my son, you know, he does Taekwondo. He'll come back. We'll go golfing for an hour or two, hang out on the golf course uh, when we're here in Florida, uh, play with Drea, you know, have her run around the golf course as well. If you follow on social media, you see that. Um, spend a lot of family time. I usually turn off like what we would call work around three or four or five, depending on the day. And, um, you know, and, and just focus on family. And but I'm still by the way, I like. I'm sure you're the same way. When I'm out and I hear someone talking, I want to talk to them to help them. I, you know, I love talking about money. I love talking about growth. I love talking yeah. about opportunity. Um, I hate people make excuses. I hate people talk about the same thing over, expecting different results. And it's like I just want to address the problem, the real problem, and go. What's the solution? Um, so I'm very conscious of that, man. But I love deal making. That's that's my name, man. It's a uh, good and bad. I love putting deals together. Today, I just invested in another company. Actually, the wire just went out today. So. You know, I'm getting excited about that. So I'll be thinking about that stuff while the kids are watching Tom and Jerry. I'll be maybe ar articulating, you know, creating an architectural piece of the company, trying to figure out how to grow it, to evolve. Who do we fire? Who do we hire? And why? Right. Um, but that's fun to me, man. Like, because I, I know, you know, it's 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 my journey, and it's I got to do the work, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the same exact way. I geek out when people ask me about business or about money. I'm like, oh yes, here we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it it just but, it's so much fun at that point. Yeah, you know, I love teaching my kids about money. Um, yeah. you know, my son understands what a PL is. He knows what ROI is. He knows the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. He knows these things because I'm talking to him about it. And if you're a parent not talking to your kids about money, shame on you. You got to start today. Um, kids know m money is a part of everyone's life forever. Um, there's going to be transactions going on. So teach them how to invest it. Like it's funny, Mark will like put a bunch of dollar signs. Dad, are we this rich yet? I'm like, yeah, not yet. We're getting there though. And, you know, Mark, by the way, what does rich mean? You know, teach them stuff like that. Because um, rich isn't just about money, by the way. Rich is about being a great giver, a great communicator, like just being a great person all around. That's what my goal in life is to keep, teach my kids how to just be great humans. Everything else will take care of itself with effort and work and determination and drive and grit and all that fun stuff. But um, that's why I write the books, man, honestly, is really for my kids, you know, so they can say, hey, you know, one day I'll be gone, but they could read that book and say, damn, that's where dad was at that time. 
you know, because yeah. I've written a bunch of real estate books and I moved into transition into business built book, the 10 minute business owner, and then magician versus meal, now me economy. These are massive different genres, um, way different. And it's like the evolution of my life and all, sure. you know? Yeah. So, that, that's one of the, the biggest things that I always think about is like, I'll have the episodes of this show forever, you know, pretty mm -hmm. much. And, and all the books that I've written, all the content that I put out, all the, you know, the different podcasts and, and all those different things, they, they are what is carrying the legacy along. Yeah. That's sense. awesome. And that's, it's so, yeah, it's so beautiful. Fun, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mark, dude, this has been so much fun having you on here, man. Yeah, dude, tell that. people, how can they, how can they, they reach out to you? How can they, they hang out with you? What's the best place for, for people to go? Yeah, man. Social media is an amazing platform, you know, on Instagram and Facebook. I'm post, I'm on Instagram a lot, just sharing on the stories, right? Like, hey, I'm doing this or doing that. I have a thing called Wakey Wakey 444. I'm up every morning early, typically way earlier, 444 for right now because of editing. But uh, Instagram at Mark Evans DM. Thank you, Fred, for putting that up there. And follow me over there. And uh, more importantly, engage. Like, let me know you're there. Um, I do follow. I mean, that's how Fred reached out to me, I believe. And you know, I message people back daily. Um, I do care about your success. I care where you're at, where you're going. And if I can inspire you 1% or any or none or whatever I want to. Um, so just let me know that the content's hitting and it's helping. Um, it keeps me excited to know that someone's indulging the content and ga gaining results from it, which we I get amazing messages daily from people. Um, and podcast show, you know, the making of a DM. Um, by the way, that's D deal maker or dream maker. And it's not about me. It's about me shining knowledge to you to become your own deal maker, dream maker in your life. Um, it's very heavy. Um, it's very, you know, sometimes I get a little heavy with the cuss words, but that's, I just get passionate. I kind of forget I'm a. I, I, I watched I, your, uh, I watched your one on sales the other day. I oh my like, God. <laughs> Dude, I, wanted, I wanted to kill that guy, but <laughs> I bet. It's my fault though, by the way, like I said in the podcast show, it's my fault. Sure. I went against my gut, man. I, and that's like a, by the way, that happened literally minutes before I shot the show. That's why I was like, I have to talk about it. You know, oh, people, there's, as you know, Fred, a lot of people are like, I don't know what to say. I don't like talk about your problems and talk about the yeah. solution. That's what you say. Like, if you have a problem, talk about it and, and talk, talk through the solution, just like you're doing with yourself anyways. Mm -hmm. Share that because, listen, we're all dealing with stuff every day. <laughs> right, Fred? So, but yeah, if you guys follow me on Instagram, man, I'd love to. Connect with you guys. Let me know what's up. Um, by the way, we do a lot of funding. We do a lot of real estate. We do a lot of business buying. So, Fred, anything, man, to help you and your audience, I'd love to. I'm here for you guys, man. Absolutely. Dude, Mark, thank you so much for being here. This is this has been truly an honor, truly a blessing. I'm, I'm so thankful to, to have you on here. What words of wisdom or message or just any kind of advice or anything really would you want to leave our guests with today? Keep your feet moving. <laughs> and remember, there's a lot of people that would trade their life for your life, no matter what you're going through. Um, just stay focused on where you're at and where, you, more importantly, where you're going and just keep your feet moving and um, reach out to great people. Start reading books. Start not like more importantly, read and implement. Don't just read to read. But uh, your time's coming. And uh, when it gets there, you're actually next time will be coming because you'll realize how much you're capable of doing. Just find the wins, too, by the way. I see so many people focus on losses. Um, I get it, but focus on wins, you know, throughout the day, you got to find your wins. What is that? Your controllables. What are you putting in your brain? What are you putting in your body? Uh, what are you, what actions are you taking or not taking? Like find the win. If you haven't picked up the phone in a week, pick up the phone and make a call. Um, if you haven't told someone you love them, reach out to them and let them know via text, email, letter, video, whatever, just, just get a win under your belt and start getting that momentum of the win train going, you know, you gotta get that winning going on. Too many of you are on a losing streak, not a winning streak, as uh, that one guy says. But I'd love to see you guys just, you know, create the most amazing life in your in your world and uh, do the things you can only imagine, like things you've been dreaming about. Don't quit dreaming ever, even though people tell you you're crazy. When they tell you that, just know that you're on the right track. Because if your dreams, because keep in mind, they're, they're telling you based off of their dream pool. And they, most people don't have big dreams anymore. They're kind of giving up on them. So just stay in the game. That's all I can say, Fred. Awesome. This has been great, Mark. Thanks so much for being here. And for everybody who tuned in and hung out with us, thanks thanks so much just for hanging out with us today. This has been great. Mark, we'll have to do this again sometime, man. This has been awesome. Thank you, Fred, for having me, buddy. Have a great day. You got it. I'll thanks, see you. Man. Everybody else, I'll see you soon. Uh -huh.